social distancing live broadcast at 6 p.m. Pacific, and there is a, there's some kids over there too, so, but there's a barred owl that just called about two seconds before I turned on the video, so I'll try to be, um, I'm going to be quiet in case you can hear it. There it is. It's too far away. Yeah, so too far away. But right here, today we're going to uh, do some natural water collection from an artesian spring. Yesterday I kind of showed you how to look for a spot that might be a spring. You will never really know unless it weren't raining. Oh, look at the heron flying over there. We're going to end up looking at some beautiful heron nests. And uh, which reminds me, all this bird life that's down here by this pond, we're going to do some uh, birding day or two or more tomorrow, next week, which is the ultimate social distancing, <laughs> always has been. Anyway, so before these kids come back by, I'm going to just show you something here. This is, you're never going to hardly find this ever, but look at this, bubbling right out of the ground uh, are some springs coming right out of the ground right there. And this whole area is covered with these. As a matter of fact, that whole pond out there is, if you take a canoe out into it, it's just bubbling. Now this stream coming down right here starts maybe, I don't know, maximum 150 feet further up. That's how much water is pouring out of these springs right now. Now, of course, again, not everybody's gonna have this, but um, usually where you'll find one is on a hiking trail you'll find a, um, a place kind of where they cut the trail along the edge, and then right out of the side of the cut is some water dripping out of there. And if it's not wet above it, probably a nice spring, good enough to drink out of. Hey, Kimber, do you want to bring over our water bottles and our shovel in case this old spring that has been dug here years ago is um, needs some more digging? So this creek coming down right here starts 20 feet up yonder, and that's where we're going. Somebody dug that out many, many years ago, and we're gonna go see how it's looking in case we need some natural water, in case for some reason the water gets shut off for financial inability to pay, <laughs> or earthquake or something, knock some of the old 100 year water, old water pipes out. We're going through some, mostly salmon berry here. And, oh, looking pretty good. See, it all starts right here. Now, up and around the back, there's a bunch of springs as well. But this is, it hasn't rained here for a week, miraculously, March in western Washington. But it is going to start raining in about two days. And, boy, that's going to really make the move. Hey, a friend just showed up. Uh, he wants to come and collect some water, too, because he heard... We we're going to be doing this, and we've been to the spring together before some years ago. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're going to, um, it's going to be hard to keep that mood up starting Monday around here and wherever else it may be raining. Uh, or because it's nice to have that vitamin D, that solar rays um, help improve the mood with vitamin D, makes you feel good, and also the UV does kill viruses. Um, that's another way to purify water in some areas of the world. You just set water out in clear jars um, and let the sun kill the viruses that may have been in there. So, let's collect some water. Do you want to grab? Sure. Um, the next things we're going to do after collecting water today, we're going to um, show you how to, as I say, go number two in the woods. Now, you don't want to do it around in a spot like this because there's so many springs going into a pristine pond. Um, oh, you can give it to give Lily to John. Oh. And, um, but, um, so you'd want to go uphill more, which we'll do a little bit of that. But, you know, in case of emergency, you had to go to a diary or something and go up higher and hopefully the filter through, but you wouldn't want it anywhere near here. Um, all right. So Kimmer is going to collect some water. Oh, look, and then you can even see it kind of pouring out of the ground right here. But we happen to know that there's, um, uh, no, nothing above this, and no runoff. So, we're going to do some collection. While Kim is collecting, I'm going to, uh, here, you can take Lily back just a little bit. Let's get her out of the way. Thank you. Oh, this is so cool. Did you show them the bubbling? Oh, there's this bubbling oh, right yeah, out of there. Right here and yeah. here. Now, if you're digging out your own spring, you can also, by the way, if it's, um, 
uh, it's not necessarily a spring, but you can dig down into the ground until you get to the water table and get down below, about a foot below the water table and just let it sit for half an hour or more. And you can let that, you can just take the water right out of there, usually out in the woods. Or if you're in the desert area, just look for um, somewhere where there's some vegetation, usually at the bottom of an arroyo or where there's some hills, there's usually in, you know, um, off in the distance, just go into where there's kind of a gully and there's usually some vegetation there. You dig down and there's usually water. You just have to let it sit. Um, so, so you saw the bubbling and you saw where it's coming out of the ground oh, yeah. over there? You, did you already fill that up? Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, can I have some? I was going to have some first. Oh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so good. These artesian springs are... Um, the water source for the area above us, oh, um, where all the a bunch of wells dig into it. Uh, mm. <laughs> you want to get into the habit of waterfalling? If you oh, share, right. obviously Kim and I are married, so we probably don't have to do this. But <laughs> if you share it all, you know, um, as soon as you pass off the water bottle in a situation like we're in right now, first time in a hundred years, horrible pandemic, everybody has to modify their behavior, and so you want to uh, uh, sanitize your hands pass it off, and then waterfall. We always waterfall at Wolf Camp. Always have. Been a policy. Of course, some kids do it anyway, but kids should always waterfall. They should never share um, uh, water or drinking out of anything because one of the main childhood diseases that was fatal and plagued some people I knew growing up and one of our favorite students uh, in the early years of Wolf Camp was meningitis. And um, so and that's transferred through saliva. And so you want to be very careful of that. Fortunately, now there's a vaccine. Whew. So those kids don't die of meningitis anymore. Um, pray that's the case. So should we talk about how to go in the woods? Um, sure. Kim, you're an expert at this, right? Oh. We do the distances. All right. All right, so first of all, you want to go uphill away from above the water table and be at least 50 feet from um, you know a trail a place that people might uh, use uh, 100 feet away from a water source but there's time where uh, your waste can percolate through the ground and not contaminate the water also you want to dig let me um, let's go up right here and kind of demonstrate uh, <laughs> but before you do that, I wanted to oh, say one yeah, of the problems ahead. they had with the mountain goats on the peninsula oh. was that girls wouldn't do this as often as guys, but they would pee right on the side of the trail oh, on yeah. the rocks, and then the goats would come and lick the urine, yeah. and that's how they got acclimated to come to the area. So they please, became dangerous. guys, don't pee on the side. I mean, yeah. ladies, don't pee on the side. Walk way off the, the trail to pee. So when I and am here and I'm looking for years a good off. spot, we're going to pretend that we're far enough away from the water yeah. right now, okay. um, even though we're not. But I would look... I don't know about you, but I like an, a view. A and view I like is comfort. so important. Um, so important. So I'm looking at this log that's right behind us right here. You want to show them the log? Sure. This, this beautiful log right here. If you go up to the end, it's the perfect spot for sitting. Uh -huh. Other than it's right by a spring. Other but yes, it's, right it's a good view of the beautiful pond. Okay. Should I follow you or just stay here? Oh, okay. Quiet. All right. Oh man, there's such beautiful plants coming up. Check out the um, false lily of the valley. I think it's real lily of the valley, but it's false lily. because it's well, it's not the English lily of the valley or European so they, here in North America they call it false lily of the valley. And also we've got bleeding hearts coming up. Um, oh, and licorice ferns on the ground. And there's licorice fern on the ground. It's gorgeous in oh, here. Like the angled bit of oh. yes. Okay. So, a lot of things I actually wouldn't want to go to the bathroom on, but this is just a demonstration. So, um, I like to find a spot where I can sit down. Other people might not need to, and you can do the squat method. But if you want full comfort, um, you can have a seat. So, I carry a little shovel with me. By the way, the big reveal, uh, so to speak, at the end of this is natural toilet paper. Yay. We're gonna, yeah, so you don't have to raid the store oh, anymore. I brought that up. It's in my bag. Oh, yeah. You... Anyway. Anyway, bag. so what you do, is you're going to want to dig a hole and you want to deposit your waste material That's okay, I'll get it in an area down, John. where all of the little critters are still active. You don't want to dig down so deep that there's no oxygen. It's right, at the bottom right. of the uh, humus layer, mm -hmm. but above the um, bedrock 
uh, layer of mud or right. clay or whatever that may what be. he said. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you're going to dig down a little bit, I'm going to try to not disturb any, you know, I'm going to be really careful here. Now, the easiest way to go, by the way, is to take your pants uh, off, pants and underwear, if you're in a really place that you can be totally private so you don't get anything accidentally on you, and you can really clean up. But And I'm not going to dig further than that because we don't need to for this particular demo. Um, we would normally go down six inches for yes. sure. Yeah. And this is all humus. You might even go down deeper in an yeah. uh, area like this for sure. And if it's anywhere near special water, you would... Of course, never do it here, but go even deeper. Right. So anyway, once you've got your spot, you can drop trow and sit on the log with your behind hanging over, do what you need to do. And when you're all done, this is important, and I'm talking to you out there, no toilet paper ever remains behind. And I don't care how poopy it is, and no female products remain oh, behind. No. Ever, ever, ever. And no hand wipes. Yeah, no, oh my gosh, I mean, no toilet paper in certain environments will break down at that humusy layer. Mm -hmm. But in desert areas, um, all sorts of places, it just never really breaks and down. And if you can pack out your poo, pack, pack it out. Pack it out. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, oh, yeah, there's certain areas, national parks, places like that, you have to pack out your poo. Yes, and yes. On climbs so, up mountains. I'm going to show you what else I have in my handy Ziploc bag. So, bandana. This is great for ladies. Guys can use it too. If you go to the bathroom, number one, and you need unnatural material, you can use this to wipe. You can tie it on your backpack and let it dry in the sun. The UV rays will kill some stuff. And there's an even better thing out there. It's called the Kula Cloth, K-U-L-A. And look it up online. Oh, Kim has been sharing yep. that the all Kula over the cloth. place. It's really cool. So and it's a small company and it's great right paper. now to support them if you can. So K-U-L-A, Kula Cloth. Okay, next thing that I have, I have a little bit of toilet paper. Wet wipes because you never know when you're gonna get something on your hands that you don't want on your hands. Female products, always carry some female products. Even if you're a guy, oh, yeah. it's helpful to have some female products because you may be out with a female who needs them. Or if you have a bleeding accident, they soak up blood. You wouldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah we so always have it in our that, first aid kit. I keep it in a separate Ziploc bag. I keep all these things in separate Ziploc bags. I use you maxi never pads though myself because they so, well, they're big yes. and they, you know, in case yes. of big traumatic injury. Extra zippy for garbage because you don't want it touching all your other things, but you have little extra zippies with these. Um, and I'm not going to talk about this right now, but there are ways that girls can go without sitting down. Huh. <laughs> so. Well, speaking of not sitting down, if I this were my hole, can you hold that right there? Um, yeah. Thanks. I'm going to demo some positions here. <laughs> now, um, you don't have to necessarily sit on this and go backwards. You can also use it as a rest like this. Oh. You can also, I don't know if I can show that. Did this, I, did now, I get that? Now, if you have that? strong legs, oh, I don't know. I should strong go down legs, it's just like this. Yeah. There's all sorts Wait, hang of on, cool hang stuff. on, don't move. This. Don't move, don't move. I'm not getting you yet. There we go. Okay, do okay. the strong legs one. Oh, yeah, strong legs are like this. Strong legs like yeah, that. For okay. For those of you that have those thighs, you know, you can hang, hold it there. And it's this, this spread trowel. This is um, very common in super poor parts of the world where people are in the cities and don't have anywhere to go. Um, you know, people with skirts on, they just go like this. It's just the way it is. Um, and, uh, that's probably the people we're most worried about in this pandemic situation, those that don't have resources like we have. Um, and by the way, big shout out to all the healthcare workers out there right now. Oh man, they're working like crazy. We gotta do whatever we can to support them. Absolutely, I have to show the girl position. Oh, girl position. Yeah, girl position. Okay, Where we're, are you gonna, gonna be? we're gonna pretend that we don't have a log. We're gonna pretend that this footstep hole right here was my hole, and I gotta go, you're gonna have to angle that down. All right. I'll go from the side. So, if you're really good, you drop your pants. Down your knees, because you do not want to pee on your pants. Take them off. And you squat if it's down, private. just like that. Yep, yep. There you go. And you got to have your feet kind of far apart, so you don't splash on your feet, because that's a bummer. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to get it on your pants. So you really have to lean back. And so your pants should be up here. The waistband of your pants is going to be up in here. And you're going to be aiming right below them, right down in this area. Mm -hmm. So that is Right over your hole. Right over the hole, but I wasn't mm -hmm. over for that. Yep. Oh my gosh, is that a skunk cabbage, skunk cabbage come up yeah. right there? Wow. All right. And I'm going to talk trillium really fast. Oh, well, right here's there. the bigger trillium. Out. The other day I noticed there's a trillium right where we were uh, doing the nettle harvesting. And uh, you can okay. see why it's called trillium. Three petals, three leaves. Oh, oh three, three sepals. sepals. Look at that. Boom, All boom, sorts. boom. Yep. Can I talk Beautiful. about this unique 
propagation method? Yeah, sure. Oh, really While fast. I go up, I'm going to go grab the, um, the little critter in the, the back. number two from okay. number two. So this is really cool about trilliums. They actually propagate in a really neat way. And unfortunately, I can't think of what the name of it is right now, but you can look it up. Um, it's There are several plants that propagate this way, but what they do is they have a nutritious outer layer on the seed. And little ants come and they get the seed. And like I said, other plants do this and they all have a little bit of a different method. But ants get these seeds, they bring them back to their nest where they eat the nutritious layer off of them. And then depending on the species, they either keep it in the nest, keep the seed in the nest, or they dump it out the back. And that is the way that the seeds propagate. So it's really, really amazing. So look it up, do a little bit of research there. I'm not quite sure where Chris is going. Oh, anyway, so I guess what I'm going to be talking about our number two for number two. So if you are out in the woods and you did not bring toilet paper with you and you do not want to use moss or a flat rock or itchy bark, um, this is really, really small right now, but this plant will eventually turn into your friend. So this is called a hazelnut, a beaked hazelnut, and it is one of our native nuts in this bioregion. So if you can get to the food before the squirrels and the jays get to it, you can actually harvest the nuts. But um, we like to use it for toilet paper because these leaves get to be a really nice size. They're usually like four by three um, and very, very soft. They feel wonderful. So it's a little bit smaller than our number one for number two, but I don't think I'm sharing number one no. for number two, am I? Uh -oh. It could easily be over harvested <laughs> if people run out of toilet paper. Yeah, we, we might now, share if we really get low. But number three for number two. Let me show two. this oh, up a little bit closer. Can you yeah. hold that? Okay, so you can see the shape of the leaf. The shape of the leaf doesn't really change and you can see the vein pattern. You can see that it's got a serrate margin or kind of a jiggy jaggy margin kind on there. It looks like an alder leaf. Kind of does look like an alder leaf, but oh, so velvety soft. soft. This is what you want. Now number three for number two is good old moss. Try to get it off of the tree um, that's a little higher so there's less dirt. And try to shake little critters off of it first, just, just cause. That where you can set it up. I'm going to finish with our song. Um, and tomorrow uh, we're going to do a intro to survival, the uh, order of survival, the four things that you need to know in order in an emergency survival situation. And then we're going to maybe plant potatoes on Sunday, do some birding well, next week, all tomorrow. sorts of stuff. Yeah, all sorts of we'll things. We'll see. Okay, we'll that try to it. post. Um, I'll just hold it down here. Okay. Oops. Ah! That's a wet log. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. I'm feeling nature now. <laughs> this song is by Leslie Lightfall, a friend of mine that I met about 30 years ago in Bellingham. Travels the world, uh, New Zealand, Northern California, uh, Hawaii, all sorts of beautiful places. If you look her up on the internet, she has amazing inspirational songs and poems and meditations and videos uh, uh, just of hearing the of her by the ocean waves all sorts of amazing things that are really get you through this time these months that we may need to uh, live differently than we've been used to living for the last hundred years um, and so go look up Leslie Lightfall on the internet really good YouTube video uh, channel in particular I choose you to walk into the forest I choose you to sing my ancient song I choose you to bring strength to all the people I choose you to remember where you're from I choose you to walk into the desert I choose you to paint my ancient art I choose you to bring light to all the people I choose you to remember how to dance and I'll be with you each moment of your journey I'll carry you deep within my heart And though you travel far on this journey We'll never ever be far apart I choose you to dive into the ocean I choose you to write my ancient poem I choose you to bring health to all the people I choose you to remember how to love And I'll be with you each moment of your journey You carry me deep within your heart And though you travel far on this journey We'll never ever be far apart I choose you I choose you I choose you
tomorrow, everybody. Be well.